What's up guys and welcome. You are watching Fancy Fitness. So let's start this video with Nick Walker. He fired back with not exactly a physique update, but with just a funny smile towards everyone who said that Nick might lose even at the New York Pro this year. So let's take a short trip down the memory lane. When Nick Walker said that he's gonna win the Arnold Classic back in 2021, that was probably one of the most unrealistic claims made at that time. Majority of the bodybuilding community and almost all of the bodybuilding experts and the legends of the sport they actually called him out because winning the New York Pro against a guy like Justin Rodriguez versus winning the Arnold against William Barnack, they were two completely different levels. Although William Barnack did not show up at that Arnold, but even the naysayers of Nick Fokker will agree that even if William Barnack showed up at that show, it would not have made any difference because Nick Walker absolutely smashed that competition. In fact, he was actually able to beat William Barnack at the Olympia that year. And there was only a difference of a couple of weeks between the Arnold and the Olympia that year. And then he was able to place as high as top 3 in the world. Although he was going for the win at the Olympia in 2022. But Derek and Hadi Chupan, both these guys came out of syllabus. And he was actually able to beat Big Rami and Brandon Carey. Guys who were actually the favorites going into that show. So the point I'm trying to make here is this. Nick Fokker has been proving people wrong throughout his career. And winning the Neo Pro this time, that isn't even a big deal for him. His goal is to stand next to guys like Hadi Chupan and Derek Linsford at this year's Mr. Olympia. Now, if you guys ask me, I think he's gonna win the New York Pro hands down. But Derek and Hadi are in a different league. And before he even gets to those guys, he needs to beat Samson Daula first. Which, by the way, isn't gonna be easy. So I have a question for you guys. Do you guys believe that Nick Walker is gonna be beatable at this upcoming New York Pro? Now, I'm gonna go do the interviews in the New York Pro next week. I get to interview the winner. Who's that gonna be? Is that even a question? It's a question. Come on, Me. we want to hear it. Two time, the mutant, Nick Walker. Next up, we have a physique update from Tony Button. So seeing Nick Walker not at his personal best a week out of the New York Pro. That must have given a lot of these competitors, actually all of these other competitors, some hope that if Nick Walker actually misses his mark, he might be beatable. But I have to say that is a big if. So on paper, Tony Button is the highest rated guy after Nick Walker at this upcoming New York Pro. And unless and until he gets beaten by guys like Quentin Beesport or Martin Fitzwater, Tony Button is actually gonna be the main competition for Nick Walker here. Now he is a guy who is light on the scale. Because as for the standards of men's open bodybuilding, he doesn't weigh that much. But with that awesome symmetry that he has, that exceptional flow, the aesthetics that he has, plus the fact that he is so complete front to back, top to bottom, that makes him really dangerous. I mean, the guy has one of the most complete physiques in the men's open bodybuilding right now. Now, all that being said, Tony Barton has a lot to lose here because he needs to be at least second place here because Quentin Beastwood has already announced that he's doing Cali Pro up next. And if Tony loses to Quentin here, his Olympia qualification will be really doubtful and that will be in jeopardy. And considering that he is top 8 in the world right now, that won't be a good look for him. And there are many people out there who believe that Tony even might get beat by Quentin Beastwood and Martin Fitzwater as well. Because the thing he lacks is the size, especially in comparison to all these other guys. So what are your predictions about Tony Burton? Will he be the guy challenging Nick Walker for the New York Pro title? Stuart Sutherland aka Beef Stew hasn't received a lot of media coverage and attention. And the reason is some of these other big names that are gonna be here. But I think sleeping on him will be a big mistake, as Stu has been prepping for this show for a long time. His conditioning looks right on the money. And with the mass that he has added on his frame in the last one year, his symmetry and his flow has become a lot better. He is looking so much more impressive this time around. You guys all saw that front double bicep shot that was posted by him just a few days ago. That was extremely impressive by any standard. And we all know there are no guarantees in bodybuilding, especially at that level. Because anyone can be off. You miscalculate one small thing. You mess up one single variable. And you can miss your peak. And we have seen that happen so many times in the past. So Stuart believes that he can be as high as top 2 here at the New York Pro. Which is what he should be aiming for at least. All these competitors have trained extremely hard. And all of them would be hoping to win this show. So I am very excited to see him get compared to the likes of Tony Button and Martin Fitzwater. These guys have similar heights. And Stu was runner up behind Tony Button at the same show last year. So everyone has made improvements and so has Stuart Sutherland. So do let me know what you guys think. How high can Stuart place here at the New York Pro? So this has to be the most depleted Justin Rodriguez we have ever seen in a while. So I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. 
He's up against a very tough lineup and a miracle needs to happen for him to even place top 3 here because there is just no way he can win this show. Even if Nick Walker wasn't competing here, the chances of him winning this show were very slim. So Justin doesn't have the best symmetry on the stage. He isn't the biggest guy on the stage either. Yes, he is a wide guy. Yes, he takes up a lot of space on the stage. But the thing is, he has a wide waist as well. Plus, he has some other very glaring weaknesses as well. Like he has very weak triceps. He doesn't have enough separation in his quads. So the odds are totally against him. So hopefully they will start the carbs loading phase sooner than later. Because those cores need to be hard and full in order for him to compensate for his wide waist. Has there been any lack of effort on Rubil Mosquera's plot after his pro debut which was Prague? Yes, even Chris Cormier believes that for Rubil to be the best in the world, he needs to lock himself in and live that lifestyle all year round. And that is why going to the oxygen gym in Kuwait, where all these guys have nothing else to do but to train, eat and sleep and repeat this cycle over and over again, that might be the best environment for him. So as of right now, Andrew Jacks isn't gonna be doing Dubai Pro. And that makes Rubil a favorite going into that show, considering that he was able to beat Nathan Diesha a few months back in Prague. So Dubai Pro is now less than 9 weeks away. And right now, Rubil is looking like an absolute monster. In terms of the weight scale, he is in the 290 pounds weight. So did Rubil really have an offseason where he actually trained with the intent of growing after the Pro Pro last year? I don't think he had an offseason, because first he was prepping for the Arnold Flossack, and then it was the New York Pro. So do not expect to see some drastic improvements in his physique, especially in terms of size on his upper half. But still, we are hoping to see some kind of improvements in his physique compared to how he showed up in proc. So for him to be more impressive and challenge some of the big names of the industry, he really needs to nail each and every single day from this point onwards. He needs more weight, and that means he needs more round and cap depth. So the goal is to get the Olympia qualification this year. And unlike Ohio or the New Pro, Dubai Pro is 100% happening with Rubel in it. As per his trainer Chris Cormier. Rafael Brandao publishes a physique update on the road to his second Mr. Olympia of his career. So he's certainly taking a place in the top 10. I mean the guy was top 10 even back in 2022, which was his Olympia debut. So him cracking top 10 means one thing. Some of these guys who placed top 10 last year, they're gonna slip out. Now interestingly, Two of the guys who were top 10 last year, Regan Grimes and Charles Griffin, who were 9th and 10th respectively, they have already made the announcement that they are not going to be competing this year. So how high can Rafael place is directly linked to how much size he can pack on during this offseason before the prep starts and also how some of these other guys are going to show up. Now he clearly has some of the best aesthetics in the men's open bodybuilding right now. One of the most classic guy out there. But guys like Hunt and Lebrana, they have way too much thickness on him. And from every angle actually. And this is obviously gonna count. Unless Rafael Brandao gets as big as Samson Daouda. Now if that happens, Rafael is gonna be unstoppable there is no doubt. So he's a guy with no weak poses. And even back in 2022 when he made his Olympia debut. When he did not have this much size on him. He was still able to place top 10. And the Rafael that we saw at the Arnold Classic Ohio. That was a totally different animal. So do let me know what you guys think. How high can Rafael place. And also hit the thumbs up button if you like the video. And smash the subscribe button if you wanna come back for more. Thanks for watching.